and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We have a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash takes by fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, folks, however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today is a big old Thursday, so we will finally look and uh, predict, look, guess, and react to the Super Bowl line. It's going to be crazy, folks. We have a home team in the Super Bowl. How is the spread going to look just because of that? You know, home team automatically gets minus three points. There's never been a home Super Bowl team, so it's going to get real bizarre. And for that, we could get some real great value on the Chiefs. Possibly, possibly. So we're going to do that. Uh, breaking down NBA. Oh, my God. So many games on last night. And folks, folks. Moneymaker is back in action, folks. Um, so let's start there. Let's just start there, right there, with our Moneymaker from yesterday. It's back on track, baby. Uh, you know, we just needed a couple of, you know, games to get us kind of comfortable. All right, we just spent four straight months talking about the NFL. Now we've slowly been transitioning to the NBA. Just needed a couple days under our belt, some uh, some couple games under our belt, and now we're back to where we left off last season, folks. We were killing it in the bubble, and we're right back at it, our three team parlay Cavs minus two and a half they absolutely blew them out they won by 15 easy value there did we call it we called it a little bit um all right Bucks minus six and a half this one was a little closer but the Bucks were you know they were kind of winning all game and then um I'm blanking on who they faced but they would it would it would it was like a yo-yo in the scoring oh, all right the Bucks would be up 10 then they'd get it down to like five then it's up to like 13 then it's down but hey at the end of the day we had a minus six and a half they win by seven easy money there and then Jazz minus three and a half it once again kind of a blowout on that they win by 12 no problem they were up by like 20 midway third quarter it was just super easy yesterday so we hit our three team money maker you won like 500 bucks if you put 100 bucks on it so very well done better than that game stock stock right it's plummeting you can't even buy it anymore how crazy is that um but we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna get into that whole thing um but yeah very well done we're gonna be looking to go back to back on our money makers so all we needed was a couple of games to get back into rhythm, baby. And now we're back on track. Absolutely magnificent. Love it. And it just kind of speaks. I mean, we know what we're talking about here, folks. I know we don't have a lot of big following yet, but everybody's got to start somewhere. But, I mean, it just kind of speaks to, like, how we can kind of look at the lines and see where we get good value from. And with all the games yesterday... You know, we're going to pat ourselves on the back a little bit. With all the games yesterday, we picked the three best games that gave us the best value. And, you know, we hit because of it. So, you know, we uh, takes by fans. Pretty good here. <laughs> Pretty good here. Um, alrighty. So, we'll be doing our moneymaker, you know, today. We're going to go back to back. So, uh, later in the show, we will do that. Uh, but let's keep on going out with the stories here. Biggest story of the day here. Um, and this one's already been known. I guess, you know, even Adam Schefter was like, yeah, this is happening. But, like, we already knew it. But here it is anyway. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson is officially requesting a trade from Houston. We know this. Did you just see who they hired for their head coaching job? It's not Eric Bieniemy, So, Deshaun Watson is not going to be there. Um, it's some no name. It's some it's somebody nobody's ever heard of before. But, uh, so, Deshaun Watson is officially leaving the Texans. And we can go through through you know like we do with every quarterback go through the entire NFL see who needs a quarterback but literally folks if you if you every team every team should be going after Deshaun Watson this man is a once in a generation talent this man is fantastic he led the league in passing yards this season they won like four games how is that even possible so this man's got all the talent. We know this. We know the franchise is garbage. We know they've got no head coach, no pieces anywhere. The general manager is trash. The owner's trash. Everybody in this organization is trash besides Deshaun Watson. He's the only green spot. So literally every team should be trying to get him except like the Chiefs. Obviously, you're not going to trade Patrick Mahomes like they're like equal and Patrick Mahomes is a little better. And probably Lamar Jackson. I don't think Deshaun Watson's a huge step above Lamar Jackson. So if you're not Patrick Mahomes, if you're not the Chiefs, if you're not the Ravens, you go and get this man. Even the Dolphins, even the Dolphins. I love Tua to death, but Deshaun Watson's so freaking good. 
we'd have to kind of kick him to the curb a little bit. And it's unfortunate. And I wouldn't do that for literally any other quarterback in this league besides Deshaun Watson. So literally, I'm telling every team, try and get this man. Dolphins, we have some nice, you know, equity with our draft picks. So I think the Dolphins are definitely going to be in the ring. The Jets are going to definitely be in the ring. Uh, the Bears would be a great fit for Deshaun Watson. And I think the best fit in the entire NFL would be where I want him to go is the Atlanta Falcons. If you get Deshaun Watson, Julio Jones, and Calvin Ridley, oh my goodness, they are Super Bowl contenders right now. Now, yes, they would have to clean up their defense still a little bit. But then, I mean, even the running game, with um, Todd Gurley. He was serviceable last season. So I think uh, Atlanta probably makes the best fit for Deshaun Watson. Um, yeah, they get the new head coach, a little bit of a soft rebuild, but they've got the offensive talent. And we saw what happens, you know, with this Texans team. They had decent wide receivers. They were pretty deep throughout the entire season. And, you know, Deshaun Watson led the led the league in passing because of it. So go to, go to Atlanta, team up with Julio Jones, team up with Calvin Ridley, try to get a better running back to run the read option with. And I'm telling you, Atlanta in the NFC would be – Oof, dangerous, absolutely dangerous. So we'll see where Deshaun Wines, Watson ends up going. Um, literally, it could be any team besides Chiefs and Ravens, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah, great great quarterback out there. Now, also, let me say this. The Jags, they probably shouldn't get Deshaun Watson. I think they just have to start fresh with T Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is he's looking like one of the best prospects to come out of college in a very, very long time. So I think Jags, you got to stick with Trevor Lawrence, even though they got the number one pick. I still think they, you just, you just go with Trevor Lawrence on that part. Um, but every other team can try and get Deshaun Watson. Alrighty, Scotty Miller. I don't know where this is coming from, folks. Scotty Miller says he's the fastest player in the NFL. This man got like one open, you know, end of quarter touchdown pass, and now he thinks he's, you know, <laughs> the best receiver of all time. The kid gets open once because of his speed and is challenging Tyreek Hill to a race. So here it is, you know, every every player, I mean, this is like a topic. Like we see a, a story like this every single week of somebody wanting to race Tyreek Hill. So Scotty Miller gets asked that question on racing Tyreek Hill and his quote is I'm taking me every day of the week now obviously you're going to take yourself I mean like if I'm playing a sport and you know I'm, I'm like yes I'm, I'm the best in my position I'm going to say that I'm going to say that because what am I going to say that somebody's better than me I'm not going to say that I'm not going to admit that so you know maybe that's what Scotty Miller's saying here I'm taking me every day of the week Something you have to say, but can we stop playing around with Tyreek Hill's speed, folks? I mean, we just looked at it yesterday in our film study. He's too good. He's too fast. He can beat you off the line of scrimmage. You cannot guard him. He's unguardable. Where Scotty Miller, I mean, we're going games and multiple games, three games in a row. I'm not even talking about Scotty Miller being even, you know, one of the top receivers for the box team. I mean, how are you going to be, you know, the fastest player? You know, beating Tyreek Hill, Tyree Hill in a race, but you're not even like one of the best receivers on your own team. I mean, what are we talking about here? So um, I'm over the nonsense. Nobody can beat Tyreek Hill in a race. He's too quick. Um, he's too good. He's the best receiver in football. Um, I will defend this man with my life. You understand me? <laughs> you understand? The man is fantastic. Um, and then just more evidence to back it, up, back it up here. Most receiving yards in the postseason since 2018. Tyreek Hill is number one with 609 yards. Travis Kelsey is number two with 565 yards. Sammy Watkins is number three with 464 yards. So I bring up the story just, be sh just, just to show how dominant this Chiefs team is, folks. They're so freaking good. And they don't even need Sammy Watkins, and they're still good. Uh, they've got easily the three or just the top two best catching personnel offensively because we know Travis Kelsey isn't a wide receiver. And the way that, you know, Tyreek Hill is 5'10", the fact that, you know, he's still classified as a receiver is actually kind of really great. So um, just the Chiefs are so freaking good. I, I want to root for the Bucs in the Super Bowl, but, I mean, I, I don't think anybody can deny the talent that is on this Chiefs team and what they can do on a game basis. It, it, you just can't guard anybody on this team, as we're seeing here. Most receiving yards in postseason since 2018. And we're looking at like 14, 1,500 yards. 1,500 yards in the measly last two seasons of all just a playoff games. They can sling it. They know how to run an offense. They know how to scheme people open. And uh, the Bucks, I don't know. They've got the talent to try to match them. But the way that Tom Brady's playing, I don't know if he's going to be able to keep up with uh, Patrick Mahomes' pace here.
Alrighty, and then the last story to cover, um, Alabama coach Nick Saban coaching up with Brian Flores post-practice of the Senior Bowl. Brian Flores is one of the head coaches in the Senior Bowl this week. Senior Bowls, you know, all the seniors from college, they face each other. They're coached by NFL people. And now we get Nick Saban, you know, influencing Brian Flores. Brian Flores can ask about Devontae Smith a little bit more. Pull the trigger. Brian Flores, number three, it has to be Devontae Smith. And, you know, this picture gives me uh, gives me a lot more hope that he is going to do that because there's really only one decision at the number three pick, folks. I don't want to hear anything else. If we take a lineman, I will be done with the franchise. If we take another receiver, I will be done with the franchise. If we take a running back, uh, it will be all right. I wouldn't hate it, but I want Devontae Smith more. I want Devontae Smith on the Dolphins, Tua Smith, uh, and then we're in Super Bowl. Super Bowl. As soon as you get Devontae Smith, Dolphins go from not even making it to the playoffs to Super Bowl champions just like that, folks. It's that simple. <laughs> Um, Alrighty, those are all the stories that we just needed to cover for today. So let's go to the NBA action. A lot of games on yesterday. A lot of games for us to kind of pick through, see which ones we like the best, and hey, we hit our moneymaker, so we're going to be doing it again today. Um, all right, let's quickly preview these games uh, from yesterday, and then we'll go a little bit deeper into the stats. So here we go, Pacers and the Hornets, and the Pacers getting back on track here, and they're looking real good, folks. Um Getting back on track. They've got great ball movement, folks. The way that they just spread the ball around. Sabonis can distribute the ball. Everybody can hit. Everybody's driving. Everybody's cutting on every single play. And they're just dishing it. And, you know, just getting into the paint. Easy bucket. So, Pacers, this was a really kind of impressive win against the Hornets last night. Very impressed by them. Cavs, Pistons, well, we know the Pistons aren't good. Blake, no Blake Griffin, and it's still the same bad team. So, unfortunate there. The Cavs, you know, they can beat the bad teams. They can beat the better teams. You know, we saw them beat the Nets. Um, so, Cavs get back on track with the win, 122 over the Pistons, 107. <clears throat> Magic and the Kings and what's going on with the Magic and what's going on with the Kings they're they've been kind of upsetting some teams here recently so let's give some credit to the Kings we'll see what's going on with them who is hitting well was it De'Aaron Fox was it Betty Heald was it somebody else so we'll check that out in the Magic I mean Aaron Gordon played Vucevic played what happened there why did why is this Magic team losing to the Kings at home not a good look so something you know to stay away from Magic a little iffy yes they've kind of been good they had like eight wins so far but you know losing to the kings last night not good Alrighty, Nets and Hawks, and this game went into overtime, and I'm super impressed on how the, how well the Hawks played. Um, I wouldn't figure that they would beat the Nets anyway, but the fact that they took them into OT, huge great sign here, um, and we'll see um, kind of a big, big name here for the Nets putting up a lot of points. That uh, kind of goes against our narrative that we've been painting for the last uh, two days. Alrighty, Nuggets in the Heat, and folks, folks, listen to me. Stay away from the Heat as long as Jimmy Butler is not on the floor. Jimmy Butler just brings everybody together, together on the floor, holds everybody account accountable, makes everybody a better three-point shooter, and that's exactly what they're missing right here. As long as Jimmy Butler is not in the starting lineup for the Heat, we will not bet them, we will not root for them, we will not think they win, and uh, that's what we're getting because another very lackluster shooting performance, only putting up 82 points. Points um, in the Nuggets getting uh, you know another win here 109 82. Alrighty, Lakers and the 76ers, folks. I told y'all it would be a good game. We told y'all to sit down and watch it, and we get a huge, great performance down the stretch by the by the supporting cast for the Lakers. Unfortunately, the 76ers have some nice hitters as well, and they hit the buzzer beater to get the one point win over the Lakers. So. This was a close game on the spread. I think it was like 76ers plus three and a half. Um, we chose to stay away from the game, and I'm very glad that we did. So, uh, you know, once again, yes, we're giving you the best bets of the day, but we're also giving you some solid bets to stay away from. So, uh, close game here. Really could have went either way. 76ers win it by one, 107-106. <clears throat> Alrighty, Bucks and the Raptors and the Bucks. I mean, they were pretty dominant throughout this entire game. Would get a big lead. Raptors would come back a little bit, and then the Bucks would get the lead right back up again. Um, really, no. The the Bucks have great size down low, and the Raptors just don't have the size to match it. Um, not like tall wise, but just like beefiness, like the way that you know Chris Middleton is built, the way that Giannis is built. Even like Dante DiVincenzo's got some beef on the man. So. Raptors missing a lot of beef down low, so the Bucks just exploit that. 
They win at 115-108. Celtics and the Spurs in another game I think we advise to stay away from just because of how good the Spurs can be um, defensively, and that's what it came down to. Celtics, Spurs, close game throughout. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown both played. Still lost. Not a good look there. But, um, you know, just defense gets it done at the end of the day. It was a um, DeMar DeRozan hits a mid-range jumper to put them up uh, by two points with like 30 seconds left. And then the defense, DeJounte Murray rips Kemba Walker. That really ices the game. Four-point lead. Transition leads to a bucket. And at that point, the game's over. So the defense really getting done, um, getting it done down, low, down late. For the Spurs, absolutely fantastic. I mean, what else do you expect from Greg Popovich, coach team, defense, folks? Alrighty, Wizards back in action last night, and they're back in action with another L, unfortunately. Uh, Russell Westbrook rested this game because he needs rest from, you know, his six turnover games, his seven turnover games, his, you know, 11-point games. It tires people out. I mean, can you imagine going every single game, putting up 10 points and six turnovers? I mean, that would get exhausting after a while. Uh, you know, on the other hand, we had Bradley Beal dropping 47 huge, giant points here. But, uh, you know, the Wizards, that's all they have is Bradley Beal. And it's unfortunate, but uh, they they lose again. 124, get blown out. 106 over the Pelicans. Um, yeah, the Pelicans, they're nothing special. They got some good players, but, um, you know, they're not beating the good team. So, Wizards, not a good team. They blow them out. No surprise there. Um, already Thunder and the Suns, and this game was close. Even without Devin Booker, the game was close. Came down to Chris Paul. Um, buzzer beater with like five seconds left. Three-pointer to tie up the game, but he misses it. He misses it. Could have tied it up at 100. It was 97 to 100. Chris Paul misses the three-pointer, and the Thunder, you know, just pull away from there. So 102-97, win for the Thunder. No Devin Booker, and the Suns still performed very pretty well here. Um so a promising sign here. We didn't think, once again, we kind of told you to stay away from this game because we knew Devin Booker was not playing. So another, you know, good bet to stay away from. Uh, Suns lose, 102.97. Mavericks, Jazz. All right, Jazz looking real good. Um, you know, this was one of our picks from last night. Absolutely fantastic. Um, even w without Donovan Mitchell, it didn't even matter for the Jazz. You know why? Because the th sixth man of the year steps up big because Joe Ingles comes into the starting lineup and steps up big as well. So this Jazz team is so freaking good. They're deep, folks. We're going to get into it. The like, when we look at how deep this team is, they're freaking good, folks. And that's why we have them. I think we've got Got him on uh, number four in our power rankings. Let me double check. Number four in our power rankings, which we update every Friday. So it's coming up before another update um, two days from now. So Jazz looking real good. Super impressed by them. Don't even need Donovan Mitchell, and they're still fine. And, you know, once again, we're staying away from this Mavericks team. Yes, Doncic is looking good. Triple doubles every night. But, you know, Russell Westbrook got triple doubles every night. Doesn't translate to wins all the time. So until they can start stringing together some wins, we're going to kind of stay away from the Mavericks as well. And then the last game from last night, Warriors, Timberwolves, and, you know, they, they just faced, you know, two games or two days ago. Warriors blew them out 130 to 108. And once again, another blowout here, 123 to 111. So, yeah, the, war, the, the Timberwolves scored like three more points than they did the other meeting. But this isn't a good team, folks. As long as Carl Anthony Towns is not in their, their starting lineup, they're not going to win a game. And even with him in the starting lineup, they're not going to win games really either. So, uh, Matt, Timberwolves really have nobody. Warriors getting some quality wins here, building up their streaks here a little bit against you know the lesser teams. And hey, you know, got to build confidence early in the season, got to build some momentum, and that's what they're doing here. So good win by the Warriors, one twenty-three to one eleven. Alrighty, let's go a little bit deeper into all these games. Talk about some stats. Who's doing good? Who's doing bad? Keep tabs. You know, we talk about this every day a little bit in depth just so, you know, we can hit the moneymaker, folks. We do this for a reason, folks. It yields results. Um, so here we go. <clears throat> Pacers, Hornets, let's see, uh, Sabonis, very, very great game by him, 22 points, 10 assists, 11 rebounds, triple-double for the man, he shot 90%, 9 of 10 from the field, his only miss was a three-pointer, and he still hit two of them, so what a fantastic game by Sabonis, he's super underrated in this league, he's, I mean, Sabonis is so good that the Pacers were like, alright, we're gonna trade Victor Oladipo, Victor Oladipo was the face of the franchise for like a year, <laughs> like, uh, I would say probably 26. 2017 around there um maybe even 2018 
And then Sabonis comes along and is like, hey, we don't need y'all anymore. I'm kind of better than him a little bit. I'm a more kind of complete player than Victor Oladipo. So the way that Sabonis is playing gave the Pacers, you know, organization management enough kind of, all right, this is good. This works. Let's get rid of one of our best players. So, and they're still winning games because of it. And they're still getting real good kind of contributions here. So. Not only did Sabonis did really good, so did Malcolm Brogdon. And, you know, just him driving, Sabonis, you know, dishing out real good dimes to everybody cutting. I'm talking Malcolm Brogdon cutting. I'm talking Doug McDermott, Doug McDermott cutting to the basket. I'm talking Justin Holiday raining down threes because everybody's, you know, running, you know, cutting to the basket. You know, you open up the three-point line. And just, how, just look how good this three-point shooting team is. We'll tell you the starters here. Justin Holiday, 5 of 10 from three. Sabonis, 2 of 3 from 3. Miles Turner, 2 of 5 from 3. I can get behind that. 40% solid. Um, Jeremy Lamb, only 1 of 5. So, you know, but he was the worst three point shooting on the raw on the starting teams at 20%. And then Malcolm Brogdon at 4 of 7. So this team's got some great, you know, down low post players. They can all hit the three. This is a solid team. And then you get the good contribution here off the bench from Doug McDermott. 28 big old points in 28 big old minutes. Fantastic. Um, so very well done to them. Now let's go to the Hornets now. Gordon Hayward, a little lackluster game from him, only 16 points. Uh, what else we got? Terry Rozier, 20 points, three assists. Uh, who else we got here? LaMelo Ball off the bench, eight points, 50% shooting, five assists, four rebounds. I'll give him that. All right, that's a solid game from La uh, LaMelo Ball off the bench. We can get behind that. Not bad. Um, especially off the bench. Um, all right. Miles Bridges, 11 points off the bench, three rebounds, doing good there. Just, um, you know, they, they definitely need Gordon Hayward to drop like 30 points a game, this Hornets team, because he's their superstar. Maybe their one superstar. Are we going to count Terry Rozier as a superstar? I don't think so. Not yet, at least. He could be. He could get there. He may have been there, you know, a couple seasons ago. But, uh, yeah, Gordon Hayward's their only superstar that they got on this team. So, 104 from three, 16 points, just not going to get it done. And uh, the Pacers beat him because of it. Alrighty, Detroit and the Cavs. And, um, you know, no Blake Griffin here, and the Pistons are still the same. So, Blake Griffin doesn't add to their success or really add to their fa failures here. So, he's a mute point. He's a mute factor. Um, something interesting just to kind of keep in mind. Derrick Rose off the bench, 13 points. So now, you know, we kind of told you yesterday that we didn't think Derrick Rose was going to play because, you know, we saw him kind of get brought up into trade rumors. So we can tell that, you know, Derrick Rose playing, there is no imminent trade of Derrick Rose being traded. <clears throat> He'll probably be traded if he does a little closer to the NBA trade deadline. So, you know, this is, you know, something to once again, keep in mind when you're looking at this team, when you're looking to bet the game, Derrick Rose, he's He's going to be playing stills because they're not trading him right now. Now, if a trade is going to be imminent and they play on that day that, you know, the trade's going to either happen like right now or maybe tomorrow, then Derrick Rose is not going to play. So him playing see, uh, tells me that there is no trade imminent of Derrick Rose. So that's uh, something interesting there. Um, what do we got? Jeremy Grant really stepping up here. 26 points, only two assists and three rebounds. Shooting, you know, 53%, two of two from the three. I can get beyond that. Got to the line 10 times. Mason Plumley down low, 15 points, 12 rebounds. Once again, I can get behind this. I mean, this, uh, you know, this Detroit Pistons got decent, well, uh, maybe not decent. They got all right pieces. Uh, they just don't have that superstar, and you need a superstar, folks. You need a superstar. You need at least one to, like, win a couple of games. You need two to be competitive, and you really need three to win a chip. And we see no superstars here on this Pistons roster. Um, is it unfortunate? I don't even think it's unfortunate. They're just not, not a good franchise. Um, alrighty, now let's go to the Cavs, and we know that they're pretty good. They're a solid team, solid role players all getting it done, and we see it here in the starting lineup. This is what you need from a starting lineup of all role players. Everybody's scoring 10-plus points, and then you get, you know, your best player stepping up 25-plus points, as Colin Sexton did here, with 29 points on 71% shooting. Fantastic. Colin Sexton, this man is emerging. We're not going to call him a superstar quite yet. I mean, obviously, he's got to get a little bit better but this man is definitely rising I would say a notch below superstar all-star all-star I'll give him all-star credit 
Uh, so Colin Sexton, 29 big old points, five assists, five rebounds. Great stat line from him. C.D. Osmond, 10 points. Isaac um, Okoru, 10 points. Andre Drummond, 23 points, 16 rebounds, six offensive rebounds. Very well done. And then Darius Garland, 14 points, four assists. I mean, all everybody in the starting lineup really got it done. And then you got some good contribution here off the bench as well. Teron Prince, 16 points off the bench. And Jarrett Allen, their newest addition. Absolutely love him. I mean, you got Andre Drummond and Jared Allen. That's real great beef down low. Real great size in the starting lineup and on the bench. So, very well done. Done. Jared Allen, 10 points. He only had one rebound, but, you know, he's only played 19 minutes. And, you know, his plus minus was a plus nine. So good defense on his end as well. So Jared Allen on this team, very, very like it a lot. Um, unfortunately, he can't go win a ring with the Nets anymore because they traded him. But um, I think this is a pretty solid spot for Jared Allen. He could obviously play on any superstar team. But here on this Cavs team, I mean, he's a he's a great bench option here. Love it. So Cavs get the win, 122-107. Alrighty, Kings and the Magic. And what happened with this Kings team? Who balled out? Let's see. Buddy Heald, 29 huge points on 58% shooting. Very well done. De'Aaron Fox only put up 16, and he had 10 assists, though, so that's great. Um, only shot 23%, so he did not have himself a very good game. Um, really just Buddy Heald getting it done. Raquan Holmes, 20 points, 12 rebounds. Holy cow, they were eating on the boards this game. Raquan Holmes, 12 rebounds. Marvin Bagley, 12 rebounds, 16 points. Harrison Barnes, 21 points, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. So, yeah, everybody on this starting lineup team um, getting it done for the Kings. Very well done. Um, uh, solid, some all right contribution here off the bench. Hassan Whiteside, nine points, six rebounds. That's actually pretty solid in only 15 minutes. I'll give him that. Um, Tyrese Halliburton, only seven points on 30 minutes, but he did have seven assists. So still getting it done, still being active on the floor. Didn't shoot well, only 27%. But, uh, you know, the starting lineup for the Kings, I think we're going to have to start respecting them a little bit more. This is a solid starting lineup. De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, Raquan Holmes, Marvin Bagley, and uh, Harrison Barnes. So not a bad squad here. Hassan Whiteside, you know, coming off the bench, being the beef. That's not bad either. So, yeah, this Kings team, I can I can kind of see where they're getting some wins from. Um, let's go to the Magic now. I mean, the Magic, they really should not have lost this game. I mean, clearly this starting lineup is a lot better. Um, but uh, we see Aaron Gordon not getting it done here. So, really, everybody besides... Aaron Gordon and James Ennis and Cole Anthony, kind of their shoot, their shooters, the shooters. So Cole Anthony only seven points. He did have six assists. Aaron Gordon only had three points, five assists, five rebounds. He's definitely got to step up the scoring. And then we see James Ennis only eight points, but um, you know he shot well, so he just didn't take a lot of shots. As we see, seventy five percent on eight points. So Aaron Gordon's got to step it up a little bit more. Cole Anthony definitely has got to step it up a little bit more. We see Evan Fournier, 25 points, very well done, four assists, three rebounds. And then Vucevic, 26 points, nine rebounds, getting it done. Shot very well, two of two from three, 61% from the field, so just getting it done. Um, and then the solid contributions here on the bench. Terrence Ross, 16 points. Dwayne Bacon, 12 points. But Aaron Gordon, he's got to step it up. He's really the reason why they lost. You cannot be, you know, the number two option, the number one option, however you want to classify it. Vucevic, Gordon, those are the number one and two. You can't be the two putting up three points. It's not going to get it done. So the Kings get the win. Very well done. 121-107. Alrighty, now let's go to Nets and Hawks. And ooh, what a good game. What a good game here. We'll start with the Hawks. Trey Young, 28 points, 14 assists. He did not shoot well. He did not shoot well, 31%, but he had three of eight from three. Not terrible. Got to the line 12 times, just attacking the basket, being the floor general, the facilitator with the 14 assists. That's why I love this man. Uh, Clint Capella, nine points, but he had 11 rebounds and six offensive rebounds. Once again, why we love this team. Trey Young, Clint Capella, really get it done on a you know nightly basis. And then we see DeAndre Hunter. Um, do I have a note? Yeah, DeAndre Hunter had a real clutch game. Um, ended up tying up the game, I think, on a – was it a three? Might have just been a layup, but ties the game at 116 with uh, 26 seconds left. They play good defense. James Harden can't get the game-winning buzzer beater off or to fall, so it goes into overtime. But uh, let's shout out DeAndre Hunter here with a huge, huge bucket in clutch time to kind of you know force a tie. Force it into overtime. So very well done there. 
Um, off the bench, we got uh, Cam Reddish with 24 points and Daniil Gallinari with 11 points. So very, very good solid contribution on there. It's just, unfortunately, it's just too much firepower on this Nets team, as we know. Kevin Durant getting it done in overtime. 32 big old points, 5 rebounds. Um, James Harden, 31 points, 15 assists, 8 rebounds on 45% shooting when he's taken 20 shots. Kyrie Irving, so how many points? 26 points so the big three 32 31 and 26 points i mean how do you stop this folks how the heck do you stop this um, James Harden, he ended up taking the buzzer beater for the win for the potential game winner in regulation. So, you know, that's kind of a narrative that we have to figure out, you know, all the questions, who's going to take the big shot at the end of the game. I would always give it to Kevin Durant. That man's got ice cold veins. This man will hit shots in the finals over LeBron James, you know, two steps, away, two steps back from the free throw or from the three point line. Just will just instantly cross head path court, set his feet, shoot cash all day so you know I'm giving the ball in, cr in clutch time crunch time to Kevin Durant always we see James Harden taking this shot this time um, and he also took 20 shots. So the big three getting all the shots, 26 shots for Kevin Durant, 20 shots for James Harden, 17 shots for Kyrie Irving. And the fourth highest shot taker was Jeff Green with nine. So we see the big here, the big three here in Brooklyn finally taking over. Everybody's getting their turn. Everybody's getting their shot. We saw kind of heavy Kyrie Irving getting his shots here in the first couple games. Then it was Kevin Durant being the number two and James Harden, you know, just taking a real big old backseat he's in the trunk of this car early in this uh kind of you know these couple of games here the first couple of games of the nets big three together but now james harden he's like all right i'm taking the shots i'm taking the game winners it's me it's me I've, i'm sick of distributing the ball even though i'm still distributing the ball as we see with 15 assists with 31 points oh boy folks james harden i think is the glue that is going to hold this team together um because i don't think kyrie irving has the leadership to do so so that's a huge promising sign here james harden can still get 31 points can still put up 20 shots and still have 15 assists and eight rebounds this man we got to praise this man. It's still getting it done with all this talent on the team. Love it. Alrighty, let's quickly talk about everybody else on this Nets team. DeAndre Jordan, 11.7 rebounds. That's what you want him to do. A little bit probably more on the rebound end because uh, they obviously don't need him scoring. Maybe just, you know, easy buckets down low or miss <laughs> misses, put back dunks, put back layups after, you know, Durant, Harden, or Kyrie Irving miss. Um, and then let's also kind of shout out Jeff Green and um, Reggie, nope, Bruce Brown here for having solid contribution off the bench, even though there's really no points to be had. Uh, uh um, Jeff Green with 11 points, shot 55%. Bruce Brown with 12 points, shooting 71%. That's exact. I mean, when you can find ways to help out the offense without, you know, taking away from what the offense actually is and not trying to overshadow the offense, that's real great here. And it's kind of still early in this big three here of the Nets. So really, really great green flag here. If you're a Nets fan, you want to root for the Nets, they're going to get it all figured out. They really already kind of have it figured out. I mean, you know, what are we like four or five games in of, of, of this kind of big three era in the Nets? Alrighty, so let's get the win. Let's move on to Nuggets in the Heat. And the Heat put up 82 points. What did they put up like last game? Let me quickly try to find this because I think it was like still like 80 points, not getting to 100. So, yes, this team needs Jimmy Butler, not for the scoring, but for the leadership, for the accountability, just for the pure energy that he brings. Yeah, we see 85 points against the Nets uh, two days ago. When was this? Uh, Monday? On Monday, yeah. They put, they put up 85 points. They put up 81 points uh, last night. Not going to get it done, I will tell you that. You got to score more than 82 points. Um, alrighty, so let's start here with the Heat. Let's see who's not putting up the points. Let's see this awful shooting. I see it all right off the rip. <laughs> right off the rip. Alrighty, let's start here. Duncan Robinson, 8 points. That's not getting it done. Um, we see Goran Dragic didn't even play. Another reason why they did not have... I mean, when Jimmy Butler is not out, Goran Dragic, he is now the leader. He's the number one. He's the best scorer. He's the best leader. So when you don't have Jimmy Butler... When you don't have Goran Dragic, you can instantly kiss any scoring, any type of consistent offense goodbye. And we obviously see it here. Um, alrighty, who put up the most points? The most points by was by Kendrick Nunn with only 17. 
Once again, not going to get it done. He shot 43%, 33% from the three. So, I mean, he had a solid game. This is kind of what Kendrick Nunn does. So, you know, he's not stepping it up here without the, with the absence of Jimmy Butler and Goran Dragic. Duncan Robinson, we said eight. Bam out of bio, 15 points, seven rebounds, six assists. But, I mean, there's only so much a center can do. A center's not going to go and drop 42 a game, which somebody's got to do it here on the Heat. And they do have players to do it here on the Heat. Um, Kelly Olenek, nine points. KZ Okapala, one point. <laughs> Duncan Robinson, as we said, eight points. So just nobody getting it done here. Um, Tyler Hero didn't even play. So with all these players not being in, I mean, what, what are we doing here? So, um, yeah, this is a definite loss if you don't have Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, or Jimmy Butler. What, what are we doing here? Alrighty, let's go to the Nuggets here. Jamal Murray, 14 points, only four assists. Jokic, 21 points, 11 assists, very well, or 11 rebounds, love that. Paul Millsap, Will Barton, 10 points, 11 points, getting it done. Michael Porter Jr. off the bench, 17 big old points. That's what we love to see. We want to see Michael Porter Jr. get back into that starting lineup. One of our favorite players to watch here on Takes by Fans. Um, and he also had five rebounds to go along with that 17 points and only 25 minutes off the bench. So very well done. Um, you know, Nuggets had a pretty easy game here. Nobody needed to show out and nobody really did show out. Just solid here. Just solid. And uh, they get the win over the Heat. All righty, Lakers, 76ers, yes, sir, great game, best game of the night. Joel Embiid, is it too much? Is he too much for the Lakers, for Anthony Davis to handle? Has Anthony Davis finally found his kryptonite in the 76ers? A little bit, very competitive game. Um, nobody really can like dominated the inside game. We see Joel Embiid here with 28 points, six rebounds, only one offensive rebound. He shot 44%, so you know, really not getting down low for the easy scores all the time. Um, you know, mid-range jumpers, he's kind of settling on. And they still fell decently, eight of 18, you know, from the field, but still Anthony Davis locking it down a little bit. Tobias Harris, 24 points and the game winner. I mean, this is the 76ers have it all. They got the beef down low and they had the shooters. This is what the, the Bucks need to go and try to replicate what the 76ers did here offensively. They bring in the three-point shooter, Seth Curry, Danny Green, Tobias Harris. You've got already Giannis, so you've got to try to surround yourself with the three-point shooters. The 76ers have the blueprint here. They have the coach. They've got the talent. <clears throat> And they've got, you know, solid bench too with, you know, Thigh Buell and Shake Milton and Cork Maz and Dwight Howard. None of those had a great game this game, but the starters really all got it done. And, you know, when you're facing, you know, the best team in the West, the Lakers, you know, you're going to primarily play your starters and the bench players, as we see, not getting a lot of minutes. My, uh, Matisse Thigh Buell, 15, Shake Milton, 20. He put him nine points. So, you know, he stepped out in his 20 minutes. And then Cork Maz, only 10 minutes, and he still managed to put up eight points. So that's very solid as well um, so the starters playing most of the game here Ben Simmons even got it done a little bit 17 points 10 assists 11 rebounds just being the facilitator because that's all he can do defense and facilitate so that's what he's doing here so the 76ers have a has a real complete team here Seth Curry didn't play well didn't even play great didn't even play good played actually not good I would say garbage um, Seth Curry one of six from the field only two points so even Seth Curry not getting it done they still have the firepower to outshoot the Lakers so that's a real great sign for the 76ers team let's talk about their three-point shooters really quickly then we'll go to the Lakers Danny Green 14 points six rebounds and he shot four of nine from four of nine from three that's what I want to see from Danny Green I can when he's taking nine I'll I'll accept the 44 percent that's fine this is what Danny Green needs to do extend the floor and then you know Tobias Harris 24 points he shot real good 62 percent uh 50 percent from the three and he hit the game winner so very well done clutch 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 um and then you know Joel Embiid 28 points just getting it done so uh yeah I mean what a great game here by the 76ers let's go to the Lakers now unfortunately I mean they had a really good end of the fourth quarter just I mean they, they just say God you know Tobias Harris hits the buzzer beater he hit the shot good defense solid defense we've got the play do we got the play here we got this play queued up yes right here so let's show it. Here it is. Uh, we'll go full screen with this. 
Let's watch it. Here we go. Final. Lakers up one at this point. Here it is. Just a mid-range J, baby. Over Caruso. Hit it. Unfortunate. Now the Lakers have no timeouts. Only two seconds left. They just have to go inbound the ball. And this is good full court defense by Joel Embiid to body up Anthony Davis. He has to heave up a three. That does not fall, obviously. And, uh, you know, just shout out to Tobias Harris. Let's watch it one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cash money. I do this. I do this. Who, the Lakers. We're supposed to lose to the Lakers. So, supposed to be worried about the Lakers. We're the best in the East, baby. Stop playing with us. Stop playing with the 76ers. They're good. They're clutch. They hit the three. They hit the mid-range. Truly hard to guard because you've got to guard the entire floor. Alrighty, now let's go to the Lakers here. And they were also clutch as well down the stretch there in the fourth quarter, as we just said. Dennis Schroeder. And uh, KCP hitting real big threes to close the lead because this Lakers team trailed the entire game, basically. Basically the entire game, um, you know, kind of a 10-point lead, I think, for the 76ers around there with, like, I would say, like, five minutes left in the fourth quarter. And then the Lakers slowly started to chip away at that lead and actually had the lead uh, by one, as we saw with seven seconds left uh, before Tobias Harris won the game. So very well done. Let's shout out Dennis Schroeder and KCP. Dennis Schroeder, 16 points, one of three from three, but that one three hit was very clutch. So, hey, if you're going to hit a three, definitely make it make sure it's cl cr clutch time, crunch time, however you want to call it. Same thing with KCP. He only had three points. So the one shot that he did make was pretty damn clutch. Unfortunately, no solid, you know, solid points by KCP or Dennis Schroeder, you know, three and 16. Dennis Schroeder still needs to put up probably 20 points. Kyle Kuzma, once again, not helping out LeBron James. I mean, the Lakers had every opportunity to win, but the, the supporting cast for the Lakers, for LeBron, just weren't getting it done consistently throughout the game. Now, it's great that they showed up late in the fourth quarter, but LeBron's like, man, I'm, 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 I'm showing up since tip-off. Y'all just want to, you know, mosey on around here on the court for the entire game and then show up two minutes left in the fourth quarter? So Lakers still having the same problems, you know, just, you know, that LeBron James always runs into. Nobody's consistently stepping up here. Kyle Kuzma, three points. KCP, three points. Marcus All, eight points, two rebounds. Uh, you know, not getting it done. Uh, Montrez Harold, no points, one rebound. Why are you out there? Wesley Matthews, three points off the bench. Markeith Morris, four points. Taylor Horton Tucker, two points. Now, Alex Caruso had 10. I'll give him that. But, um, you know, we need somebody else to start is to start stepping it up here in the starting lineup because LeBron James went for, for 34 points, six rebounds, six assists on 54% shooting. And Anthony Davis went for 23 points, eight rebounds. So, I mean, they're doing their job. They always do their job but they don't uh they don't have that reliable third anymore Dennis Schroeder is trying to be he's trying to make it work here but um you know not uh you know if he had 20 it'd be a different story he only had 16 Alrighty, let's move on to the Bucks and the Raptors now. Here we go. Bucks getting it done. Giannis, 24 points, 18 rebounds, 9 assists. Um, let's check his free throws again. Once again, not good. 57% from the free throw line. How are you? <laughs> Folks, he shot 57% from the field. He also shot 57% from the free throw line. Why is that? Why is that? That should not be real. You should not pay pay a player for this for this type of performance. <laughs> Got to clean it up. Um, let's shout out Chris Middleton. He had a fantastic game. 24 points, 7 assists, 10 rebounds, and he shot 62% from the three. Chris Middleton. He's I, I'm going to call him a superstar. I'm going to call him a superstar. We kind of clowned him a little bit in the bubble. Didn't think he was going to be this good and this consistent. But, um, yeah, I think we've got to give uh, Chris Middleton. Do we leave him at All-Star? Should we raise him up to Superstar status? Because he's really hitting the three very well here. And he's, you know, kind of a main reason why the Bucks are having success here early on the season. Yes, they have Giannis. I get that, folks. But you need more than one person. And Chris Middleton is being a very, very, very solid number two. Um, love it. Alrighty, Brooke Lopez coming up with 20 points and 7 rebounds. Very well done by him. 
Um, alrighty, what else do we got here? Nobody else really did anything great. Brian Forbes was the fourth leading scorer off the bench with 11 points. Uh, Dante G. Vincenzo, 8 points. He had a really kind of solid dunk late in the game, emphatically. <laughs> um, Drew Holiday, 7 points. DJ Augustine, 9 points. So, yes, yeah, so, I mean, the big three, th their big three is the beef. Chris Middleton, Giannis, Brooke Lopez, that's the Bucks' big three. Um, and it's all down low. Yes, Chris Middleton hits the three, but with Brooke Lopez and Giannis, and even Chris Middleton, he's beefy, folks. Like, he can go down there and play in the paint and be a solid defender down there. So, um, they got good size. They just don't have the consistent three ball. As we see, yes, Chris Middleton, five of eight. Even Brooke Lopez hit two of three, but everybody else, not that great. Giannis obviously cannot hit a three to save his life. Dante DiVincenzo, 0 of five. Drew Holiday, one of eight. Uh, so it's just, you know, the starters got to step up on the three a little bit. Um, all right, let's go to the Raptors now. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, Pascal Siakam, only 11 points. That's not going to get it done. Fran Van Vliet, only 10 points. That's not going to get it done. They need all of their starters to really put up 15 plus. Yes, Kyle Lowry had a good game with 21. Norman Powell had a good game with 26, but... They still need their starters because they're all role players. They have no real good bench here. Chris Butcher, 10 points. I'll give him that in 13 minutes. But other than that, Terrence Davis, 8 points, 20 minutes. Got to start stepping it up a little bit more. So, um, you know, Raptors, as we said, still saying they are, you know, they've reached their maximum potential and now they're just on the decline. That's what they are. Alrighty, Celtics and the Spurs and the Celtics. I mean, close game throughout, but down the stretch in the fourth quarter, late in the game, the Spurs defense prevails. So Jason Tatum, 25.7 rebounds. Jalen Brown, 24 points, five assists, four rebounds, doing what they do, 25 a game. That's what we can expect from them. Oh, Daniel Tice in the starting lineup back there, only played 12 minutes, only had five points, and only had one rebound. So this is why the man does not get it done. So Tristan Thompson off the bench plays, and he only put up eight points and eight rebounds. All right, no great bigs here. This Celtics team does not have a real great big, and that's why, you know, they're a little bit worse than last season. They lost the firepower from three in Gordon Hayward. They lost some beef. I mean, even though that they did, weren't really even playing them that much, Ennis Cantor, um, you know, he was still their best big, and he wasn't even getting the play. So still rocking with uh, Daniel Tice. Tristan Thompson, new this season, not getting it done. Um, all right, I mean, look at these bench. I mean, look at these bench points by this Celtics team. Tristan Thompson, eight. Carson Edwards, zero. Aaron Nesmith, zero. Jeff Teague, zero. Uh, Javante Green, two. Semi Olaje, five. Robert Williams, their kind of other center, their other big, six points. He did have seven rebounds, I'll give him that. But Grant Williams, three points. They just don't have another great shooter. Marcus Smart is a little iffy, as we see, two of seven from three. He ended up having the chance for the buzzer beater game winning three and he misses it. He was wide open in the corner. That's usually his shot and he misses it. So he's just not reliable, not consistent, only 14 points. And then Kemba Walker, you know, he had the game losing steal. He got the ball stripped from him. The South or the Spurs go down, score an easy layup. That puts him up four points, two possessions. At this point, there's not enough time to overcome that. So Marcus Smart, Kemba Walker, both floundering here in this game, unfortunately. All right, the Spurs now, very well done. DeMar DeRozan, he ended up hitting the big old shot to uh, give him uh, the two-point lead before the steal. And then it's DeJounte Murray with the steal to seal the game. So very well done. We know we love De DeJounte Murray. He really does it all on the floor. Tr very, very almost true point guardish. ish um, 11 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, that one steal. He had the one steal. Yes, the one steal that he had was the game winner. Um, so well done there. DeMar DeRozan, 21 points, 7 assists. He shot 87%. He only went, missed one shot in the entire game. Very well done. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge, 20 points. Lonnie Walker, 14 points. Keldon Johnson, 18 points, 10 rebounds. So this is a very solid squad. They're very well coached. Not they And they got a decent bench. I always forget Rudy Gay is on the bench on this team. Uh, 7 points in only 17 minutes. Not bad. Um, solid defender as well. 
But um, yeah, Patty Mills off the bench, 12 points, probably you know one of their better you know shooters off the bench. Um, Jacob Podol usually pretty good, but um, only four points, but he did have nine rebounds. So a uh, very solid team here in the Spurs. They're always solid, very well coached. They've got the superstars. I'll, I'll card Amar DeRozan a superstar. I think everybody would. Um, and they've got really great solid pieces here. So great team here by the Spurs, very well coached. And hey, they went down the stretch here against the Celtics. Solid win there. Alrighty, Pelicans and the Wizards, and as we said at the top of the show, no Russell Westbrook, he's too tired, turning the ball over, so Bradley Beal goes off 47 points, shot the ball 37 times, he's like, fuck it, I'm just going to do it myself, man, there's nobody else good on this team, I unfortunately signed an extension last season, so I've trapped myself, so I might as well just make myself look good, we're not going to win games, so he, he, Bradley Beals knows that this Wizards team cannot win games with this with these players, there's nobody good on this team besides Bradley Beal, yes, they have Robin Lopez, but is he the worst Lopez brother, he may be the second best Lopez brother, folks, so... All right, here we go. Um, Bradley Beal, 47 points. And then the second highest was Garrison Matthews off the bench with 15. And then the third leading scorer was Brooke Lopez with 14. And then the fourth leading scorer, the fourth leading scorer was uh, Jerome Robinson with eight points. So that's not going to get it done. Not going to get it done. Um, we don't even need, I mean, literally everybody on this Wizards team is not good. They're not good. There's nobody good here. Jordan Bell, is he good? He's got a lot of rebounds. I'll give him that, 11 rebounds, four offensive uh, but he's not putting up points, and that's what the what the Wizards need. Can't because Bradley Beal cannot put up 120 a game. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Alrighty, let's go to the Pelicans now. Brandon Ingram, Zion having absolutely monster games, and that's what we came for. That's what we look for when we watch this Pelicans team. We don't care about anybody else besides Zion and Brandon Ingram. I don't care about Lonzo Ball. The man cannot play consistently. So 32 points for Brandon Ingram on 63% shooting, and he had eight assists, and he had six rebounds. I love the way Brandon Ingram has evolved so much these last two seasons. It's so great to watch. Uh, Zion Williamson, 32 points. He didn't do really anything with assists and rebounds, only two assists and two rebounds, but he had two steals. So just getting it done, just being on the floor, you know, doing everything. Um, not great defense from Zion either, as as we see. I mean, if we're when we're looking at you know all the starters uh, from the Pelicans plus minus, we see Brandon Ingram plus twenty eight, Steve Adams plus twenty seven, Eric Bledsoe plus fifteen, and Lonzo Ball plus twenty three. But Zion's only a plus four, so not great defense by that man. Um, alrighty, Steven Adams, six points, 18 rebounds. I'm a big Steven Adams fan. They've got this, this, uh, this Pelicans team, they've got a squad. Brendan Ingram, Zion Williamson, Steven Adams, even Eric Bledsoe, he's still decent. Lonzo Ball is probably their worst player. How crazy is that? Nine points, shot 37%, four assists, two rebounds for Lonzo Ball, just nothing great. Josh, Josh Hart off the bench is usually pretty reliable. Only six points here in this game, but he had eight rebounds to go along with it. Jackson Hayes is another kind of good score, good athletic player out there, eight points. So, And then J.J. Redick, another fraud. J.J. Redick, Lonzo Ball, their worst two players on this team. J.J. Redick, one of four from three, classic, five points, classic. This man is super classic, super predictable, and he needs to be out of the league. I'm super over talking about J.J. Redick. Um, I mean, all these scores is, you know, high pick and roll threes in the first quarter. That's literally all his game is. I've watched him forever. That's all he does. Never hits the big shot. I'm over him. Um, alrighty, so Pelicans get the huge win, 124-106. Let's close out these last three games a little quickly here. Here we go. Suns without Devin Booker. Chris Paul, 32 points. First game. I, I, I think it's the first game against the Thunder. Um, anyway, it's the game against the Thunder, his la his ex-team from last season. And he balled out. Unfortunately, he could not hit the, the game-tying three, unfortunately. Had the chance, couldn't get it done. Uh, but, you know, very solid that they were able to kind of hang around without Devin Booker. You know, he is kind of their best scorer on the team. But Chris Paul goes for 32 points, five assists. DeAndre Ayton, only five points, but he has the four rebounds. That's what we like about DeAndre Ayton. Cameron Johnson, eight points. Jay Crowder, 17 points. Good job there. And then we'll shout out Abdel Nader with 12 points off the bench. Alrighty, the Thunder, Lugans Dort, huge clutch shots down the stretch. 
14 points, 14 points in total. And Shea Gillis Alexander once again, um, big shots down the stretch in the fourth quarter. I mean. It's classic that Dort and uh, Shea Gillis Alexander were the ones that kind of won the game for them down the stretch because they were the ones, you know, winning the games and, you know, consistently putting in the work when Chris Paul was there last season. That's why they got to the playoffs. So, you know, I uh, I kind of like that Dort and Shea Gillis Alexander stepping up, you know, still doing what they do, even you know without Chris Paul. So great job there. Al Horford had a pretty good game, 21 points, 11 rebounds. Um, yeah, Thunder, they got that. They got a solid team. Hamidio Diallo off the bench with 10 points as well. So we know this Thunder has a solid team. They just don't have the superstar. That's really it. Alrighty, Jazz and the Mavs. And let's shout out <coughs> the Jazz first here. Um, Joe Ingles, he steps up into the kind of the starting role because, um, you know, no, um, no Donovan Mitchell. So Joe Ingles steps up with 21 huge points and eight assists. Very well done. Rudy Gobert doesn't even matter. Doesn't matter if Donovan Mitchell's not there. Rudy Gobert, he's like, I pick and roll. Y'all can run the pick and roll. That's fine. Let's run the pick and roll. And he had 29 points and 20 rebounds. Uh, the man is fantastic. Royce O'Neal, nine points, solid there. I mean, that's what you want. Um, and look at this, uh, Jordan Clarkson, folks. Jordan Clarkson, the sixth man of the year. Once again, he's like, oh, y'all don't have the starting point guard. Y'all need a little bit more help. Well, hey, I'll still be on the bench, but up my number, up my minutes to 32 minutes, and I'm gonna deliver 31 points and seven rebounds. Love it, love it, love it, love it, man. Oh man. All right, so yeah, I do like this Jazz team. They've got great pieces. Royce O'Neal, Rodi Gobert, Joe Ingles, Mike Connolly. He put up 17 points and six assists. Jordan Clarkson, Georges Niang. I mean, they've got great players. And the fact that they won and were still cohesive and still productive offensively without you know their main guy, Donovan Mitchell, he's the one that's commanding the offense on the floor, really just commanding the offense in total. Um, so, you know, even without him, they still win it. And he was out with a concussion protocol. Uh, that's why he didn't play. So, no, nothing too major. He'll be back maybe a game off, two games off, but he'll be good. Alrighty, let's go to the Mavericks now. And what is going on with them? We see Luka dropping another 30 points, six assists, four rebounds, shooting pretty decent, 54%. We see Chris Tapp Porzingis, 18 points, only five rebounds. Definitely got to get those numbers up a little bit. Tim Hardaway Jr., 19 points, but nobody else is stepping up. It's like crazy that you need four players to step up on a team. But, you know, that's what they need here. This is what the, the Mavericks need to have. So, I mean, we see giant drop-offs, leading scorer, 30, then the second is 19, then the third is 18, and then the fourth is 8. I mean, that's a huge drop-off. Nothing good from Dorian Finney-Smith, only 3 points. Nothing good from Josh Richardson with only 6 points. And then on the bench, you're getting no solid production here. Yes, Trey Burke had 8. Yes, James Johnson had 8 points. But we need other scores here. We need better. I, I don't even know what this team needs. It just doesn't translate the wins. They've got the superstar, Luke. Doncic, K, uh, Chris Dapp Porzingis. They've got three great three-point shooters. Um, Tim, Tim Hardaway Jr., we can definitely count on him. Trey Burke, we can definitely count on him for three-pointers. I mean, they they just don't win games, and it's unfortunate. But uh, did they reach their maximum potential last year in the bubble? It's kind of looking like that because we're seeing the Jazz just having no problem here without you no know, one of their best pieces, Donovan Mitchell. Alrighty, and then the last game of the night, we can go over quickly because we're talking Timberwolves. We can easily get these this team out of the way because nobody's good on nobody is good on this team. Um, we'll shout out uh, Malik Beasley with 25 points. We'll shout that man out. Anthony Edwards once again, 25 points, pretty good by him. Is he a rookie, Anthony Edwards? I feel like he is. Um, can we quickly see this? Yeah, 19. He's got to be a rookie. Yep. Uh, he was the first overall pick. Oh, first overall pick in this year's draft. Yeah. So, you know, um, I've kind of been impressed with him lately. You know, 25 points off the bench. You know, very well done. Four rebounds, two assists. All right. So that's basically their best player, a rookie. And uh, rookies do not make impacts instantly. They take three, four years to develop. That's why I hate the NBA draft. It's trash. I'm going after superstars. I'm going after established players. I will give you my first round picks. That's why the 
Thunder will never be good ever again in the history of their franchise. They have all these picks, and you're not going to get anything good out of them. As soon as they, you know, a pick starts to develop, they trade them away for another pick. It's like, what are we doing here? So the Timberwolves are still not good. All right, let's go to the Warriors now. Here we go. Curry, 16 points. Kelly Oubre Jr., back up. Pretty good. 20 points, 9 rebounds. Do not trade this man. Please do not trade this man. James Wiseman, back down to the bench role, and he's actually having better success on the bench. That's kind of crazy. Well, not kind of crazy, but, you know, it's a little unfortunate because <laughs> he probably won't be starting uh, that much for the rest of the season. But James Wiseman, 25 points off the bench with 6 rebounds. So coming into his own, you know, finding out how to learn learn to play the game, how to learn to play in the NBA level. Uh, so Kevin Looney takes over the starting position again. I think we saw this. I think this is two straight games with Kevin Looney in the starting lineup. Uh, two points, but he had 10 rebounds, five offensive boards as well. I can get behind that. Um, Draymond Green, six points. Very well done in the plus minus, a plus 30. Andrew Wiggins, 19 points. So, you know, the usual suspects here doing usual things. Like to see it. Damian Lee, a little unusual here, 17 points off the bench. Shot a, oh my God, he shot 83%. Woof. Very well done. So, yeah, Warriors face an easy team. Nobody steps up big. Very solid contributions around the board. And they get the win. Um, alrighty, so let's go to our moneymaker for today. Couple of games on any nationally televised games. Let's quickly check. Ooh, Trailblazers and Rockets tonight, 7.30 on TNT. And then Warriors Suns, uh, the late game on TNT. So we'll see if Devin Booker is good to go. Let's quickly see really quickly. Uh, before we look at the bunny maker, let's see if we see anything, any updated information. Who's in, who's out. Uh, we get anything. Let me just look up this uh, NBA account. NBA Fantasy Labs, definitely uh, follow them on Twitter. They're probably my favorite account of, I, of whoever I follow on here, honestly. They're super quick on who's in, who's out. They kind of tell you, you know, as, as, like they're before Woj. They're before all the NBA stuff. So uh, they got great people over here. All righty. Let's see. Do we, are we seeing anything? Mm, nah, nothing really. Unfortunate. Um... I just want to know about Devin Booker. That's really it. <laughs> That's really all I care about. Is Devin Booker playing? Um, Anthony Davis is going to start today. That's good news. LeBron James available to play Wednesday. Siakam available to play. Tyler Hero out Wednesday. And Anubi out Wednesday. Rajon Rondo out Wednesday. Cam Reddish available to play. Sabonis available to play. Uh, today's not even Wednesday, so what am I even thinking? <laughs> today's Thursday, so yeah, nothing nothing new that we know. All right, here we go. So let's go here. We'll do our moneymaker. Here we go. All right, updated lines. Update them one more time just to be safe. <laughs> here we go. All right, a couple of games on. Four games on. First one, Rockets, Blazers, and it's Rockets minus four and a half. Already, uh, Blazers still missing a lot of their pieces. Rockets, John Wall, Victor Oladipo should still be good to go. I, don't, I mean, they had their first game last, uh, you know, their last game, and they worked out very well. Um, obviously, a little bit of hiccups, but hey, I mean, when you bring in two superstars who have never played together, I mean, it's going to take a little bit to finally get solidified, and I was definitely impressed on what they did in their first meeting. So, Rockets minus four and a half. I think it's a solid play. Let's see if we get any better value in these next couple of games. But um, I'm definitely staying away from Blazers plus four and a half. It's just too many outs. Even, you know, even though they still have good players without CJ McCollum and Nurchic, Damian Lillard, he he's proving he can't get it all done himself. So Rockets at home very well. I do like that Rockets minus four and a half. Kind of a lot, but let's see if there's other better things here. Alrighty, Lakers and Pistons, and it's Pistons plus nine and a half. Lakers minus nine and a half. Lakers minus minus nine and a half should be a no-brainer. This Pistons team is not good. Both of these teams in a back-to-back. -back. Both, I mean, this Lakers team are they gonna go 100? percent I think they were only really going 100 percent because they had that undefeated road record going into last night. Then they lost it. They're on the road again in a back-to-back. -back. Will they be going 100 percent? Will LeBron James? play the entire game while well, AD played the entire whole game so nine and a half is a lot to swallow 
I think I'm, we're going to stay away from it, even though Lakers seems like the clear slam dunk, minus 9.5. And, and I would never take the Pistons with any points, folks. Never, never. Even with 40 points, we don't take don't take that. I would take the other team minus 40. <laughs> All righty, Clippers in the heat. Clippers plus 4. Once again, this is going to tell us that is Kawhi Leonard and Paul George going to take another game off? It's got to be. This Heat team, is Jimmy Butler coming back? I don't think he's coming back this game. Let's see what we get here. Can we look up the Heat? Because that spread is wonky. That's a wonky spread. There's no way the Clippers should be plus four. No way. No way. Um, alrighty. We see anything here? We see anything here? A lot of game time decisions it must be, folks. That's a wonky spread. Even without, honestly, honestly, even without Kawhi Leonard and Paul George for the Clippers, I still think I like the Clippers plus four over the heat without Jimmy Butler. Back to back for them. We're taking the Clippers plus four. Uh, we're going to go with this, folks. I don't, uh, something's going to be wonky here. There's going to be a big, uh, there's going to be a kind, of, kind of a big out maybe an hour before tip off. But even with all of that being said, the heat can't score. He can't score. They need Jimmy Butler. Truly, they need that man a lot. Alrighty, then Warriors and Suns. And Suns minus two. Warriors plus two. Still unsure of Devin Booker's status. I, we haven't heard anything from him yet. Um, he's missed the last two games. Interesting. Interesting. Alrighty. So, our moneymaker for today. We're going to lock in Rockets minus four and a half. We're going to lock in. Clippers plus four. And that's what we're going to get for today. Little two-teamer, moneymaker. We hit yesterday, baby, three-team parlay. We're looking to hit this kind of two-teamer here. Clippers plus four. Rockets minus four and a half. You bet 100. You know, the odds are plus 267. So you went 267. Pretty good. And then you get the 100 back, you know. Very well done. Um, Alrighty. Let's kind of go shift gears into the NBA or the NFL for our main topic of the day, which is guessing, predicting, reacting to the lone game, the one game, only one game. How unfortunate. You know, we're so used to talking NFL and so used to this rhythm of breaking down on Monday, cash trash list, power rankings Tuesday, film study Wednesday, guessing, reacting to the lines on Thursday, picks on Friday. You know, we're dwindling here, dwindling. But, hey, we're still doing it because we still got games to do. So, closing out the NFL season here. Truly saddened to see it go. But, uh, you know, we still got basketball. So, hey, there's that. Alrighty, so Chiefs, Bucks here. Super Bowl. We all know the matchup, right? Um, Bucks at home. So, we got to give them minus, minus three because of that. So, Bucks minus three. Not our official prediction, but it will help us out a little bit. Um, Tom Brady, what do we know about him in the playoffs? 55% completion percentage. That's what we're looking at. Multiple turnovers. I mean, he had three last week. All deserve to be picks. He almost had a couple last week. I think we counted three against the Saints. That should have been picked. Unfortunately, defensive backs are not that good at holding onto the ball or getting two feet down. So Tom Brady is still throwing these interceptions. The Chiefs defense is very good. The Chiefs offense is the best offense in the NFL, hands down. Tyree Kill's the best wide receiver. Patrick Holmes is the best quarterback. Andy Reid is the best head coach. Eric Bieniemy is the best offensive coordinator. Now the Bucks have the second. They've got the second best, well, I don't want to say second best quarterback because Tom Brady, yes, he's playing good and yes, he's showing, you know, improvements. But just like last week, yes, that first quarter, that first half was fantastic. But the second half, they did nothing. They did nothing. They took advantage of turnovers, two turnovers by the Packers, a pick by Aaron Rodgers, a fumble by Aaron Jones, setting up short fields for Tom Brady. And he's going to capitalize on short fields. That's what that's what makes Tom Brady so great. He doesn't need he it's not all him just driving 75 yards. He he knows when to when to turn it on, when he needs to go a thousand percent, when he knows he needs to kind of get momentum and capitalize on momentum and capitalize on turnovers, not settling for field goals. That's what Tom Brady does, folks. That's the best thing about him. Patrick Mahomes, he can go 90 yards in a minute. Yeah, like that's what this offense can do. Tyreek Hill, you can't guard him. The Bucs are going to have trouble guarding him. This Chiefs defense is pretty damn good. I love everything about it. Tyron Matthew, my favorite safety in the league. Um, the Bucs, 
They've got great weapons, obviously, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Godwin, Scotty Miller, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones. I can keep going on and on. But at the end of the day, I'm not impressed by Tom Brady. I'm impressed by the throws that he's still able to make and, you know, the what he's still doing at his age. But in the grand scheme of things, in a full game, it's 55%. It's, it's miss, it's complete. It's miss, it's complete. It's miss, it's miss, it's complete, it's complete. It's it's one for one, folks. It's nothing special. Um, Aaron Rodgers, I think the Packers had so many opportunities to win that game. And if you give those same opportunities in the same game scenario to the Chiefs, I can guarantee you they win that game by 14 points. They win that game, that same exact game that the Packers lost. The Chiefs win that game by at least, at least 14 points. Capitalizing on the touchdown or on all the turnovers, this Chiefs team—they've got so much momentum. Um, the Bucks—they've been here. Tom Brady's been here. They're at home. Can't get any easier than that. There's uh, the biggest thing about the Super Bowl is that both teams have to travel. Both teams are uncertain. Most—I mean, when you—I mean, players. Most players don't get to more than one Super Bowl. So when they get there, they're like, "Oh my goodness, I'm out of my element here. I'm on the road. My schedule changed. My kind of routine that I'm in every single day is changing." Tom Brady and the Bucks are like, "Oh, can't relate. We here. We just go. Oh, we just go to our home stadium." For the biggest game of the season, for the biggest game of the year, to win a championship, we just go into our, our own locker room. Oh, okay. That's easy enough. So that home field is going to be so critical, so crucial for the Bucks. But talent-wise, I got to go with the Chiefs here, folks. Got to go with the Chiefs. So we're going to predict this one. Minus three for the Bucks. I think the Chiefs had the better quarterback, the better wide receiver, the n- better number one wide receiver. And the better head coach. I'm going to value all that. I'm going to value all that at Chiefs minus five. So you get Chiefs minus five. Bucks minus three for the home field. That translates to Chiefs minus two. And I'm going to give it an extra half. Just because. (laughs) So Chiefs minus two and a half. That's going to be our official prediction. And at that point, I absolutely love it. I hammer Chiefs minus two and a half. They win by three. That's fine. I think the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl, folks. I think they're going to win it. It's just I'm not impressed by Tom Brady. I'm not imp- uh, by a whole game film study. Yes, he's got drives. Yes, he's got uh, halves. But um, yes, he's got quarters. But um, I can't get behind 55%. I can't get behind multiple interceptions in playoff games. I'm not going to get behind it because Patrick Holmes is not even close to throwing interceptions. When was the last time Patrick Holmes was close to throwing an interception? I've got six by Tom Brady in the last two games alone. Alone. And if I went back to that Washington game, I'm sure I could have found some uh, ooh, some ducks there as well. So our official prediction will be Chiefs minus two and a half. Let's go to DraftKings. Let's update the line. Let's see the line. Let's see what we're working with here. Are we off? Are we on with Vegas? Let's see. Refreshing the line. Line is up to date. 113 on January 28th, Thursday. We guessed the line at Chiefs minus two. And the official line for Super Bowl 55 is... Chiefs minus three, folks, right on the money. Woo! Half a point off, but hey, you know, whatever. Um, But yeah, I mean, folks, our thinking is right on par. The Bucs have the home field advantage. That's fine. But in the grand scheme of things, the Chiefs, they've got the talent. They've got the talent. Are you going to go against Patrick Mahomes? I don't think you can, folks. He's playing flawless football. No turnovers. Doesn't even need to run. I mean, the Chiefs can bring out the run of Patrick Mahomes and catch everybody off by off guard, folks. Truly. Um, Chiefs minus three. I know I should save this for tomorrow's show, but I'm taking it. I'm taking the Chiefs, folks. Is it going to bite me in the butt? I mean, uh, we picked the Saints over the box. We t- we picked the Packers over the box. And, I mean, Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers were both beating Tom Brady. We're both beating Tom Brady. Then Drew Brees started to throw interceptions, and Aaron Rodgers couldn't capitalize off the interception. So, I'm trusting Ch- uh, Patrick Mahomes. He's going to get it done. He'll convert on the turnovers. He won't turn over the ball himself. So, if Tom Brady... If he has to go out there and do it all himself, not getting you know easy field position because of the defense, um, 
playing flawless. I mean, if the if he plays sixty percent completion percentage, if that's what he does, is that going to be enough? How, how what's the what's the what's the standard for Tom Brady to play well? That's going to translate to a win because fifty five percent completion percentage and three interceptions. I can guarantee you will not get it done. We're big on Chiefs early, folks. We're big on Chiefs early. We're not going to give you our official pick till tomorrow or maybe next week, but I'll tell you right now, we're big early on the Chiefs. And at minus three, I think that's a, that's fine for me. I will take that. I will swallow the three. That's fine. Um, Tom Brady, I'm just not impressed with them for an entire game. Whereas, you know, Patrick Mahomes, an entire game against Buffalo, when they got down 9 nothing, no worries there. 38-6 to run, no worries there. Second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, when we're already up 21, when we're already up 20. It doesn't matter. We're going to keep the pedal to the metal. Um, and Tyreek Hill is unguardable. So, yeah, Chiefs minus 2.5. That's what was our prediction. Chiefs minus 3. Right on target, folks. Right on target. Alrighty, that is going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll give you our official prediction, baby. We'll lock it in. We'll lock in Chiefs minus three tomorrow on the show. Uh, cover basketball, stories, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, tomorrow, noon Eastern, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. Bet the moneymaker, folks. Bet the moneymaker. Clippers plus four. What was the second one? <laughs> Clippers plus four. Rockets minus four and a half. That's the moneymaker for today. Alrighty, folks. We're out of here. We're back tomorrow. See you.